You're watching Phillies post game live presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. Ricky Patalico, I'm Michael Barkan in a moment. Ben Davis from St. Louis trying to explain a 6 1 loss, their second loss in a row, and a series that ends in a tie. Phillies win the season series, certainly, and have the tie break over St. Louis should that situation arise. But Ricky Bowe, we discussed pregame how this was not like any other game that guys really were supposedly getting up for a game like this because you wanted to distance yourself a little bit more from St. Louis now back in a tie. Well you had to wonder what was going on offensively in this series because the Phillies really didn't do much in this in this whole series and that to me is very concerning. I mean whether it be if Bryce Harper is out that's where a guy like Castellanos has got to pick it up a notch who hasn't. Yeah he had a single down five runs late in the ball game which really didn't mean anything in this ball game. You have to start Start getting the meaningful hits the hits with runners in scoring position which the Phillies didn't even muster too much of that either in this ball game so uh, I mean any way any way you really slice this I look at this as an offensive series gone bad and yes Aaron Nola you know he didn't have uh, he, he had really good stuff he early on I can't say that he looked pretty good the fifth he had inning really was a good stuff story. he ran into the fifth inning and all of a sudden it became a long inning for him in 90 something degree heat which isn't good after just throwing uh, four innings of what 36 pitch baseball or 38 pitch baseball that it, that that was just an inning that fell apart on him and I really believe it had a lot to do with his tempo when the runner got on first base look over there throw over there throw I mean come on your, your focus should be at home plate are you really worried about one guy over at first base and the thing I've noticed about him and I'm sure you noticed too because we, we we have this this timing mechanism because of our job we do that we watch this and you say to yourself why is he so concerned about the guy at first base answer and it's kind of funny he doesn't care if it's if it's Albert Pujols over there or Ricky Henderson from way back when over there it's like it's the same guy like he's going to steal off me. Yeah, that is a terrible way to approach a baseball game. Let's see. You have to you have to look at that mitt and think about that. Let's see if Ben Davis has an answer for that question. We go out to St. Louis. Ben called tonight's game with Tom McCarthy. Ben, we we're talking about Aaron Nola. Let's start with him. And when he gets a guy on base, he is seemingly distracted. All of a sudden his pacing changes and there's a greater chance for the opposition tonight St. Louis to score some runs. What do you make of that? Well, I don't know if it's necessary that it's slowing down. Yes, the pace does slow down quite a bit, but I'd look at it more so with pitch selection. He was cruising through the first four innings. I looked at Tom. I said, you think a nine tonight? And he said, absolutely. And it just fell apart there in that fifth inning. And it just seemed like everything started to change. It, it, we talked about the, the fastball use. It was 26 fastballs in the first four innings, 10 knuckle curves. He gets in that fifth inning. He just threw 12 fastballs and 10 knuckle curves. So it's, you know, that the usage went up. And I look at it the whole at bat with Dickerson. Blew him away on three fastballs. And I, I, I asked our, you know, production crew to, you know, put that package together just so I could show you the ride and the, the finish he had on those fastballs at Dickerson's first at bat. His next bat, he comes back, goes change up, fastball, another change up. And he's just speeding his bat up. And, you know, if I was always under the impression, make the hitter make the adjustment first. You could have a scouting report, but if the scouting report is off or whatever, a certain night, maybe your pitcher has better stuff than what you're accustomed to, then maybe get off that page and stick with what is really working. And the first four innings, the fastball command was really working. Got a ton of outs with it. And it just seems like they started to vary. But I will agree with Ricky. It does seem like the pace slows down. He gets not as, as focused on the hitter. Yeah, I think that's a definitely a problem. And, and to add something to this, because you just said something that kind of rang my bell. You just said that, and you're absolutely right in what you said, that you blow somebody away with fastballs, and then all of a sudden you change your pattern on them. Is this something that they already have planned going into the game, or is this something that him and JT come up, come up with on the fly, which I think is, would be pathetic? I think it is kind of kind of planned for the most part because they have these game plans and they want to stick to them. They you know, obviously have a lot of numbers in their heads and, and how they're going to attack certain guys. But I, I think there's sometimes, there's many times, Ricky, where I had a pitcher that maybe we have a certain scouting report, but if my pitcher can't or can do something really good that night, say you have a guy that has a good slider, if he doesn't have a good slider that particular night, you have to get off that page and go to something that is working for him in that particular ball game. 
it just seems like everything was so good and on point. It just seems like once they got around the second time through that lineup, it's just like, well, we can't we can't stick with that game plan anymore. We have to change it up. Is it premeditated? I would say to a, to a large degree, yes. Hey, ben, just a quick question because this is a little concerning to me. You watch this offense all four games. It, it does not look the same all of a sudden. Are you at all what, – what is your concern level? Uh, I'm concerned, obviously. And now with Boehm, you know, we haven't heard any, any results back from him yet either. It did not look good. Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't want to come to any conclusions that, that we may or may not have. But it didn't look good. And he, we all could read his lips, and he said, it's broken. That's what he said to Paco Figueroa. Again, I don't want to jump to conclusions. But now he was hot as could be. If he's going to be out of there, they're going to have to find something out there that, that they can fill, fill the void there at third base. Um, yeah, I'm concerned about the offense. They weren't getting the production out of the bottom of the lineup. That's why they've been so good. Getting a couple guys on for Kyle Schwarber. Um, you know, the middle of the lineup, JT had a couple hits tonight. Castellanos had a couple hits. But, you know, eight singles, you know, that's not going to cut. They didn't get a runner scoring position till the ninth oh, inning nine. there. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with the lineup. And, uh, yes, yeah, some pieces in this lineup that are irreplaceable. I don't think you can replace Segura, and you definitely can't replace Harper. The way Bohm's hitting, swinging the bat right now, it's it hasn't been, uh, you know, he's been great, especially with runners in scoring position. That's what they need. Yeah, and you you see how precarious sports can be in general, and certainly Major League Baseball. And you look at one through four tonight, Ben. They came into the ninth inning two for twelve with five strikeouts. They end four for sixteen with five strikeouts. I don't know if there's any amount of maneuvering that's going to fix that over the games ahead. Do you think? I think the lineup is, is what you see is what you're going to get on a daily basis, at least up until the All-Star break. Uh, there might be some guys that you move in and out, but I think Rob Thompson has his mindset on keeping it this way and hoping for the best. Uh, he expects a little bit more out of the middle of the lineup. He, he was very open and honest with us yesterday about that. Uh, hopefully these guys can come through with a little bit more slug, a little bit more RBIs and, and some power numbers. Until that happens, you know, I, I don't know what, what he's going to do. There's not a whole lot of options there. Five to one. As the Phillies fall, that was behind. pretty much the game was over at that how, point. How about the Phillies' offense wasn't wasn't giving up a fight anyways. Yeah, why Nola stay in so long? Do you think? Well, the three-one game, I think I keep him in. He had that long inning. You knew he was wearing down a little bit after those two balls went out, or after that ball went out of the ballpark. I'm thinking, all right, that he's done. He kept yeah. him in there. I was surprised. Probably because well, Bullpen no, he's going to have one more start. Maybe. You know, maybe no, he'll I, start Sunday. No, no, no. I'm just thinking they're, they're going to Toronto. We can get into that in a little bit. But going to but Toronto, they'll be depleted. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but they might need they might need help from yeah. the pen tomorrow. Well, we'll he's see. still pitching on four days rest. Let's though. hear from Aaron Nola post game.
that's as down as I've seen Aaron Nola after a loss. Normally you can't tell. Win or lose is pretty matter of fact. It looked like his performance got to him tonight as well. It should because the Cardinals and the Phillies are once again tied for the final wild card spot. And yes the Phillies hold the tie break should the teams be yep. don't get runs against Miles Michaelis. Yeah he literally made one bad pitch and that was a hanging breaking ball to Reese Hoskins. But the one thing about him he's very unpredictable. Any count you might get any pitch. He stuck to what he normally does. You look at his his pitches and they're all pretty well sorted out. I'm talking about 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent and then like 30 percent for for his uh, four seam fastball. So he mixes up his pitches well. He's not afraid to throw backwards. That means in a three two count he might drop a breaking ball on you and he did that a couple times. Though. I, I actually said that to you. Look, I had that written down in my notes, yeah. and he did it like early in the ball game. But he's got good stuff. He knows how to pitch, and and that's that's a uh, that's a thing that's kind of a lost art. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, and he he threw the ball extremely well. All right, we go to Rob Thompson and his thoughts on tonight's loss, but also going to his home country of Canada to manage the Phillies. Uh, so it's a dislocated left ring finger okay. so we, we did x-rays x-rays were negative they reduced it so they popped it back out and uh, you know played a tolerance but um, we don't know what the move is yet we're gonna do it so does he go on the IL we don't know okay we don't know does okay. he go on still go on the yellow list the restricted yes so we'll go on that well that'll, that'll buy you some time Evaluate. If he's an IL, I doubt. I don't think he goes on a restricted list. So you could conceivably make up your mind before first pitch tomorrow on the IL. Maybe. Yeah, we'll just have to wait. Is Camargo back in play at all or no? No, he did another day. What did he have a setback or something? No, he just didn't feel right. Okay. Yeah. So will Alex stay here and be like medically evaluated for the finger or will he? I'm not sure. I haven't talked to Paul about that. We surprised because he he actually mouthed the words it's broken. Yeah. Right? So this yeah. I guess it's kind of good news. Uh, well, it, it, dislocation. Yeah, it's better break. than a break. Yeah. yeah. We got two broken. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. What are your feelings about head first slides? Are you an anti head first slide guy? When uh, when I was with the Yankees in the minor leagues, I eliminated them. You did. Yeah, I, I banned them just just for that reason. But I mean, I mean, guys. Guys slide head first all the time. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to ban that at this right. level. Yeah. So you come in here, you get two, and you go two up on them in the wild card. Race. I know it's a long way to go, but is it a little bit disappointing to come out of here and get back even again and not build on the two games? Well, you always want to win series, and, you know, and just keep keep your momentum going. But uh, you know, they they pitched us pretty good this series, and we didn't score a whole lot of runs. But uh, that can change overnight. You never know. Nola really, uh, you know, first four innings pretty good, and then he hit that kind of some trouble in the fifth. Did he yeah. kind of hit a wall, or you know, how did you sort of see that? It looked like he had trouble out of the stretch yeah. more so than out of the windup. Uh, what that was, I don't know. I haven't looked at the tape and looked at location or anything like that, but uh, it just seemed like there were, you know, some harder contact out of the stretch, but longer counts, things like that. What would your uh, interim plans at third base look like. I mean, I, mean, I guess there's a lot. Well, we got Munoz, right we got Veerling. Yeah, we got some options. So we'll have to look at it. Look at the. I don't even know. They at the last time have they made a decision on who they're starting tomorrow? I think Tosman said he was hoping to start, but I don't know. If yeah, so I don't think it's, there's a definite okay. answer there. Keep Stott at second. You wouldn't move him over to third. No, I keep him right in second base. Okay. His thoughts on the loss tonight and that news uh, right now. Here's JT. How do you feel about it, I guess? You know, like you know, some people say you're, you're letting your team down. Um, teammates have supported you, though. So one people, how do you feel about it? I mean, yeah, it's, it's an extremely unfortunate situation. Um, obviously, my teammates know how I feel about them and, and um, how bad I want to be out there with them. But um, it's just unfortunate that I'm not able to make the trip. What, what are your reservations with your I just, I mean, I'm a healthy 31-year-old professional athlete um, that I just didn't feel a need to get it. Um, I've had COVID a couple of times and super mild symptoms uh, back when it first came out. And when it came time to decide whether um, I needed a vaccine or not, 
uh, talked with a couple of doctors that I knew and told them my story and just really decided I didn't think I needed it. And I, I wasn't going to take it just because I was told to, basically. So mm -hmm. Even if it meant not missing? Because you're going to forfeit a good amount of salary. Yeah, but I mean, what's 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 money when I'm not going to let Canada tell me what I do and don't put in my body for a little bit of money? It's just it's not worth it. For me. What's your you know? I know that this is sort of down the road yeah. and can't see into the future, but I mean, let's say you guys make the playoffs, they make the playoffs. I mean, would it be something that you consider if there's a potential like whatever percentage chance there is that you'd meet in the World Series down the line? Um. I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak on hypotheticals, but I mean, I just I hope by that point that it's all figured out and we don't have to deal with this anymore. How about this series? I mean, you pick up the first two right out of the gate, and give yourself a little breathing room, and now it's all tied up again. I know it's a long way to go, but yeah, um, it's a good team over there. It's definitely disappointing to, to start the series two and zero. We felt pretty confident, uh, even after losing yesterday. We we're pretty confident we we're coming today and win the series. Um, it's tough, tough to lose two games in a row, um, but that's a good team over there. It's going to happen. Um, we just have to, you know, turn the page and, and finish this next week off strong before the All Star break. Well, Alec, uh, Alec did not break his finger, dislocated. They popped it back in. I mean, you guys got to feel pretty fortunate there. Yeah, I mean, if, if anything good could come out of today, it's the fact that he didn't break his finger. You know, because that was a pretty nasty, ugly play. Um, it was, we were fortunate that it was just dislocated. Um, he was obviously going to get a couple days off anyway, so. Hopefully he gets rested and, and is back sooner than later. What was your view of Nola there in the fifth? I mean, he kind of cruised through four and hit some trouble there. Yeah, I don't. It's hard, it's hard to know what to think. I mean, I felt like he made made some good pitches. Um, once guys got on second, it felt like they were taking pretty good swings at him. So um, I don't know if we were just being too predictable or what the case was, but. Um, I feel like he made good enough pitches to get out of some things, and, and we weren't able to get out of it. So uh, we'll just have to go back, look at the film, and, and see what we're missing. Would you be able to take some swings the next few days? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a spot down in Miami um, that that full gym, uh, mounds and stuff for the guys that need to throw bullpens and um, batting cages as well. So we'll be able to stay ready and basically just wait on the team. What's a little bit of money when I'm going to not let Canada tell me what to do, what I put into my body, what I don't put into my body? Ricky Bell, I obviously want your thoughts on this, but JT Real Muto was asked by Jim Salisbury in the assembled media, do you feel as if you're letting your team down by not taking the vaccine and being prohibited from going to Canada? He said it's an extremely unfortunate situation. Unfortunately, I'll be unable to make the trip. Uh, I'm a healthy 31-year-old professional athlete. I have had COVID a couple of times, super mild symptoms when it first came out, talked to a couple of doctors. I just didn't think I needed it. I'm not going to let Canada tell me what I do or do not put in my body. The, the question is, is whether or not he owes it to his teammates and owes it to the fans. He also talked about it's just a little bit of money. It, by the way, it's a better part of $300,000. But um, ju just your thoughts on, on uh, how you see it as a former major league player. Some guys just have stands that they're going to take. Some guys take stands. And the, the, I, don't, I don't think his first thought was, I'm going to hurt the team by doing this. I don't think any of them had that as a thought. Uh, I, I just... You know, I look at it this way. If the rest of the team is good with it, what, what do we have to say that, that's going to change that? Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the bottom line is he did what, what is right, quote, unquote, for him, and that's what he's living by. Uh, what, what else could you do? We could sit here until we're blue in the face, say, oh, just go get it, just go get it. Uh, you knew he wasn't going to answer that question about the World Series. No. But, but that is a question, and Jim Salisbury asked it earlier to, to other players and uh, w said, what happens if you go to the World Series? Asked it of Dave Dombrowski, the president of baseball operations for the Phillies, and it, it could very well be an issue. We well, saw it, it already the Sixers, the Sixers played right. the Raptors. That's what I'm Matisse saying. Thibel it's sat out. it's all, already happened in other sports, so why wouldn't you think it's gonna, not going to happen in baseball? If Toronto yeah. makes the, the, the playoffs, it's probably going to happen in, the, in baseball. Yeah.